Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome onto the stage Sean Locke. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming out tonight, Saturday night. Excited. <laughs> Lovely to be here. I've, uh, I've been touring for a while now. The shows have gone pretty well. There's only one place I won't go back to. That's Guildford. Not going back to Guildford. That's a terrible blues song, isn't it? I'm not going back to Guildford. <laughs> I don't know what it is in Guildford. I don't think they just, they just don't like laughing. They don't. They don't. <laughs> if you <laughs> smile at someone in Guildford, they look at you like you've got mental health issues. You go, hello. They go, oh, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Basically, they stared at me like they were looking out the windows of a bus replacement service. <laughs> <sighs> You've never seen anyone smiling out of a bus replacement service, do you? Okay. This is brilliant. Much better than the train. Because <laughs> <laughs> you visit so many different villages. They look like my dad looked when he found out what his pension was worth. I mean, to be fair to them, it was the week that uh, Margaret Thatcher died, and they're quite fond of her in those parts. And a couple of the things that I said, a couple of the comments that I made, <laughs> might not have gone down in the spirit they were intended. All I said was, all I said was, well, hey, that was it. That was all I said. <laughs> that was it. I just went like that. Well, hey. I, I, I didn't have a party. I didn't have a party. Well, you wouldn't call it a party. It was drinks, nibbles, few friends, you know. Police were called once. That's not a party. <laughs> and I happen to mention a fitting tribute to her was when they cremated her, it'd be great if they ran out of coal. That was all. <laughs> I burnt myself the other day. You know when you burn yourself domestically in your own home, you're really stupid, don't you? You feel stupid now. Well, I burnt myself. Incredible, this. I burnt myself. I mistook the iron for the telephone. I believe I actually... <laughs> I actually did that. And the really stupid thing is, I was dialing at the time. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and I was doing the old-fashioned ring round as well. Ah! Ah! Because <laughs> I was trying to get through the hospital because I just burnt my ear. <laughs> Lovely joke, no victim, beautiful. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, that's that bit over. Um, I'm very good at linking it up, aren't I? <laughs> I love my wife, I love my kids. I'm a very lucky man, I do admit I'm a very lucky man. She's not even in. Um, <laughs> no, but there are times I do miss the old days, you know, before I was married, I do miss the things. I think the thing I miss most of all about being single is the songs you sing when you're single. You know, you know the songs you sing when you're just walking around your house, start singing a song, like, I'm gonna put the kettle on and make a cup of tea now. I might have a biscuit or a crisp sandwich. <laughs> you can't do that when you live with other people, can you? Because they don't want to see that. They want to think you've got your shit together. <laughs> I say I love my wife, sometimes I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> well, the symptoms of being in love, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, inability to concentrate, are exactly the same symptoms as carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> So I said, I think I love you, but should we just get the boiler service? Just in. <laughs> no, I do. I, I love her very much, but she upset me this last Christmas because basically what she did was, I was she was giving me my Christmas present. And before I'd opened it, she said, oh, you do know, by the way, you do know, it's very hard to find presents for a man of your age. And I found that quite hurtful. And... If there are any men of my age in, a bit of advice. Be very careful what you show enthusiasm for in the weeks before Christmas. Yeah? <laughs> you show the slightest enthusiasm or interest in anything, you're getting that for Christmas, OK? <laughs> you know, the most innocuous comments. You can be going up to bed, you say, I'll be up in a minute. I'm just going to watch the news. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he likes the news. <laughs> You'll get a biography of Hugh Edwards. Wow. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> oh, he's never had an X-ray. I didn't know that.
One time we were out walking in the countryside and there was a bird hovering in the sky. And she said, oh, that's, is that a buzzard? I said, no, that's a kestrel. She said, I didn't know you knew about that. I said, yeah, a little bit, stuff like that, a little bit, a little bit. Cut to, six months later, I'm standing in a field, got a big leather glove on. <laughs> Cube of meat on a string. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a great day. It's like he read my mind. <laughs> ah, get it off me! Get it off! <laughs> I didn't do that, I didn't do that. Don't want to upset the greenies. Um, <laughs> one time I got a fish tank. I opened this fish tank. I said, Why? what did I say? What? Because <laughs> I'd been really careful at that point. I'd been, you know... What did I say? She said, you remember you went in the, in the pet shop, you were staring at the fish for ages. I said, yeah, because it was pissing with rain. <laughs> From about October to December, I don't say anything positive about anything. <laughs> One time we got a ferry in, in, in October. You know ferries are normally an awful, crap, dismal experience. This was a, really, it was a ferry from Holland, really nice ferry, really clean, you know, the food was really good, everything was, everything was really nice. And I was about to say, oh, God, this is a nice ferry, isn't it? <laughs> and I thought, oh, oh, no, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Because I had this image on Christmas morning of opening an envelope and pulling out a golden ferry ticket. <laughs> a magical VIP day out on the ferry. Help the captain steer the ferry out of port. <laughs> Wave the cars onto the deck. <laughs> Sing a song with the group, Liquid Motion. <laughs> the other day I intercepted her, I intercepted her, ordering me some bees. And, um, yeah, what, what do, the, do the bees, obviously the bees come second, the hive first, you don't you remember that. I'll just grab the phone, we don't want any bees, go away! <laughs> I said, why are you ordering me bees? She said, well, you were going on about the plight of the honeybee. You were saying, it's terrible, people don't plant flowers anymore, they deck their gardens, the honeybees struggling to survive, and soon, when that happens, the whole of the society will collapse, you know? You were going on about it. I said, yeah, what you're mistaken there is, I like moaning. <laughs> I don't give a shit about bees. <laughs> I can't tell the difference between bees and wasps. I just kill anything I see. <laughs> Basically, she wants me to have a hobby. That's what she wants me to have a hobby. Because I don't get a lot of spare time, but if I do get any spare time, what I like doing is standing in rooms in the house, staring into the middle distance, like this. <laughs> and I'm quite happy there. I'm quite happy there. She says it's depressing. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what? I'm never happier. If I'm sitting on the bed, end of the edge of the bed, in my pants, I've got one sock on, Another one in my hand. Oh. oh. I could do 20 minutes there, I'm just gone. <laughs> and I'm not doing nothing, because I'm putting my socks on, but very slowly. <laughs> she wants me to have a hobby, but, uh, you know, and I do have a hobby, but it's just not considered a hobby. People don't consider it a hobby. My, my hobby is, is drinking. I like drinking. That's my. But it's not considered a hobby. It's not considered a hobby, you know? Well, not, when I say I like, to, I like to go out and get really drunk, you know? You know, you know? If you could see my little face when I know I'm going to go out drinking, you'd go, you'd just go, oh, he loves that, doesn't he? He loves that. <laughs> Look at his little face. I'm there, ee, ee, ee. <laughs> Nobody goes fishing with this excitement on their face. <laughs> you know? And I don't do it all the time, but when I go out to get drunk, I like to get really drunk. I like to get, I like to get about four units the right side of shitting myself. That's what I like to do. <laughs> my preferred place to be. You know, like, ah, just drawing on my face. This brilliant idea. This. <laughs> Combing my hair with a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I worked out my relationship with alcohol is very similar to the relationship that a moth has with a light bulb. <laughs> you know, you see a moth having a session on the light bulb. <laughs> it's just there going, bang, 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 bang. This is brilliant. <laughs> Who switched 
this on? <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> if you could interview a moth after a night on the light bulb, it'd be very similar to me with a hangover. He says to the moth, what happened there then? The moth goes, I oh, know, I've done it again, haven't I? <laughs> How do you feel now? I feel bloody awful. Like I'm covered in burns. <laughs> Everyone saw me. Oh, God. Because <laughs> I was the worst, wasn't I? I was the worst. Eight hours I was up there. <laughs> I bloody love you! Because some of them only do an hour, then piss off behind the fridge. What's that all about? <laughs> do you think you've got a problem? No. No, not at all. If you don't switch the light bulb on, I'm fine. <laughs> I could do three weeks on a wall, not bothered at all. <laughs> <laughs> Will you switch that light bulb on? Yes! Daddy's home! <laughs> and by the way, I'm not advocating alcoholism here, no, I'm not. I'm just, I'm sticking up for a group in society which gets, I think, get very bad treatment, very bad press, which is binge drinkers. <laughs> Nobody ever says anything good about binge drinkers. It's always really negative. Oh, binge drinkers, look at them. Oh, God, it's a lot of binge drinkers. Look what they've done to the town centre. That's what they were saying. Oh, God, look what they've done to the town centre. We didn't ruin the town centre. Tesco's and the internet did that. <laughs> We're just finishing the job. <laughs> you know? It's not the main problem. It's a bit like when you fart in a cheese shop. It's not the main problem. <laughs> or kick a dead bird. <laughs> what are you doing? It's dead. Chill out. <laughs> Put a bit of chewing gum on a mullet. <laughs> No, we do, and you get, you get really badly treated, you know, and, 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 and suffer discrimination. I've suffered discrimination as a binge drinker. I know that I've been for job interviews, and the only reason I didn't get that job is because I was fucking hammered. <laughs> Incredible, in this day and age, isn't it? I was a bit suspicious when they wouldn't join in the sing-song. <laughs> I'll get knocked down, but I'll get up again. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years' time, Mr. Lock? Pub! <laughs> They couldn't see beyond that. And the press join in. The press are very much involved in this, aren't they? I remember there was a picture of a girl once in Newcastle, in the city centre. She, and she, she kept all her clothes on, but for a laugh, she'd pulled her knickers down to her ankles. And she was standing in the centre of Newcastle going, Way! <laughs> and the headline above her was something like, Oh, God. <laughs> and I remember looking at the picture thinking, What is wrong with that? She's obviously having a brilliant time. You've got to be in a fantastic mood to be in the heart of the city where you live, where you go shopping, you go to work, you meet friends, to be in the very central, most public place in your city to go, ha, 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 hey! That's a great moment in your life. I put that on my CV. There we go, happiest I've ever been. That's also the answer to hobbies and interests. I've never met anybody who's depressed who's behaved like that. You know, I've never chatted to anyone who's depressed. Say, How are you feeling? I feel terrible. Dreadful. Every decision I make is a disaster. I'm just, I can't see a way of muddling through this miserable period in my life. You know, I'm just fed up. Everything just seems dark and hopeless and pointless. The other day, I, I went down to the canal. <laughs> <sighs> I was staring at the dark black water, trying to find a good reason to continue this miserable existence. <laughs> and also, you don't need to make binge drinkers feel bad because they'll do that to themselves, won't they? I mean, if I've had a little drinky, the next day, at least three or four times at random moments through that day, I could be doing something like making a cup of tea, suddenly I'll just go, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Sean? I just remembered something, uh, last, uh. 
And the weird thing is, once you have one of those memories, you've got it for life. Yeah? <laughs> for some reason, your brain refuses to forget cringeworthy, embarrassing moments, shameful moments. You can forget the most important information, stuff you really need to know. You can forget all of that, but it remembers every single moment in your life that you've gone, <laughs> I had one the other day, I remember the time I left a note out for the milkman, and accidentally I put a kiss on it. <laughs> 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 I think, why am I thinking of that? Hmm? Just, just, it's like some humiliation jukebox to go, let's have a look at this one from 1983. <laughs> <laughs> I, had one, I had one the other day, there was no reason to remember this. I was walking through the park. It was a beautiful sunny day, children out playing, flowers are out. And I suddenly remember this date I'd been on years ago. We're halfway through it. The girl pointed out that my shirt was buttoned up on the wrong side. So technically, I was wearing a blouse. <laughs> 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 the thing is, as I remembered it, I was walking past a dwarf. There was a dwarf... <laughs> there was a dwarf about there, and I was about there, and I went... <laughs> <laughs> and I felt the need to explain to him that it was nothing to do... That wasn't kind of Lord of the Rings, Igor type thing, you know? <laughs> I was a bit worried, so I said, Sorry, mate, I didn't mean you. And he said, What do you want about? I said, When I went... <laughs> It was nothing to do with Eagle or Lord of the Rings. And he said, why would I think that? And now that's become something that makes me go... <laughs> i tell you, actually, one, one thing I've worked out, actually, it wouldn't necessarily reduce my drinking, but definitely reduce trips to the pub. I, believe, I think there's a lack of banter in the home, in the domestic environment, you know? Like, sometimes I'll say to my wife something like, how long do you think we could all live if we only ate toffee apples? You know, just putting it out there. You know. <laughs> and she'll roll her eyes and carry on doing something worthwhile. <laughs> but in the pub, you get 20 minutes out of that! It's <laughs> a bloody good question, Sean. You've got the vitamin, you've got the fibre from the apple, you've got the energy, glucose from the toffee. I wonder if the stick pound up into a paste makes a carb. Mm. <laughs> We had a great one the other day, we were talking about what's the filthiest teaspoon you've ever seen? Oh! <laughs> what a night! <laughs> Let's have a lock-in, it was brilliant. <laughs> At what point does a lager top become a shandy? Oh. <laughs> Who would you rather share a sleeping bag with? This we did the other day. Who would you... You've got a choice, you're right, you've got one night in a sleeping bag. You've got Ronnie Wood from the Rolling Stones, or Jeremy Vine from BBC Radio 2. Ronnie Wood, for one, or Jeremy Vine. Any takers on this one? Yeah. Actually, you had a lot better response than the one my wife had. I asked her. She turned her back to me, walked over, looked out of a window, and her shoulders went... <laughs> <laughs> and she muttered something about, I suppose we've got kids and it's better to... <laughs> <laughs> the, actually, the right answer, people who said Jeremy Vine, that's the correct answer. Not, you know, a lot of people choose Ronnie, they think Ronnie's a bit of a character, and all the anecdotes, you know, a bit of a character. Of course, what they're forgetting is just how bony Ronnie is. <laughs> Every part of Ronnie is a sharp, jaggedy, pointy edge. His <laughs> arse is like a piece of flint. <laughs> Naked, Ronnie looks like a box of KFC when you're throwing the bones back in. Right? <laughs> He's held together with bits of chicken skin, Ronnie Wood. <laughs> and he'll be shaking because he's given up the pills and the booze. <laughs> ah, Ronnie, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, I've thought about this stuff, yeah. Whereas Jeremy Vine, tedious bastard, dull, boring, pointless man, like a warm column of pissy air. <laughs> But you get the feeling, when he shuts his eyes, eight hours, straight through, no bother. <laughs> people say to me, why are you having a go at Jeremy Vine? I say, because I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Seems a good reason, enough. I do, I don't like Jeremy Vine, I'll tell you why. Because you know he does that Radio 2 show, and they have these, they have these debates on Radio 2. We're going to have a debate today, and they're not debates, they're just, they're just ways to wind the country up, make the country an unhappier, angrier place, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> What? I think that was like, that sounded like 8th century Norse. That...
It's Jeremy Vine, I've just realised. <laughs> it's Jeremy Vine. He's, he's dressed up as a sort of drunken old mad cockney. <laughs> Sneaking. I've heard about this routine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a couple of super tenants like that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say anything he can pick up on, because, you know... <laughs> and then he'll just disappear into the fog like Jack the Ripper. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you know, the, the debate, you have those debates on the show, and they don't, they just make the country an unhappier place. Like, it just winds people up, it attracts nutters to phone in. Like, they'll have a debate, they say, today we're talking about sex education. Some people say it happens too soon. Other people say it doesn't happen soon enough. Are they right? Should we have sex education in nurseries, playgroups? <laughs> Should teddy bears have genitals? <laughs> and there'll be someone at home going, What? Teddy bears with cocks? <laughs> no! They're going to put cocks on the teddy bears! <laughs> and they phone it. And they pick weird subjects to have a debate about. Like they'll, they'll pick something like, you know, there, there was one, there was, there was this, this, this burglar who'd objected in court to being called a coward. The prosecution called him a coward. He said, I'm not a coward. So they started discussing it, saying, well, is, is he right? Are, are burglars brave? Should we admire them? <laughs> are, they, are they just entrepreneurs? <laughs> There's people going, Aah! And sometimes they do this trick where they leave a detail out to make a little bomb go off in your head. I mean, like, it's something like, um, uh, who's to blame for, we're talking about the obesity crisis, who's to blame? Is it the government? Is it the NHS? Is it the food industry? And they know loads of people at home going, but he hasn't mentioned the fat people. <laughs> yeah. Today we're talking about binge drinking. Why do you do it? Are you sad, lonely, depressed? Do you have low self-esteem? Do you need alcohol to enjoy social situations? And that's how I burnt my ear. <laughs> I think one of the things that I'm most known for is my inquiring mind. I think that's one of the things people always say about me. Here comes Sean with his inquiring mind. The other day I was watching the television, I was watching, you know those, those compare the market, compare the meerkat ads? I was watching one of those, and I was thinking, how come that's okay that they've got a Russian, Eastern European accent? How come that's fine? Nobody objects to that. I was thinking, if those meerkats were Chinese, they'd be uproar, wouldn't they? If they came out and went, you want cheaper car insurance? <laughs> you go, comparemarket.com! <laughs> you bloody idiot! We go, whoa, what are you doing? You can't do that. Or oh, they were Mexican. If you want to compare me cats, <laughs> compare me cat.com. You can compare me cats like my sister. <laughs> well, really, me cats from Africa should be an African voice, shouldn't it? For cheaper cat insurance. <laughs> whoa. What do you think you're doing? S stop him now. And the reason, the reason that I mention that is because I realised something quite profound the other day. I was at home, I was a bit bored. I wasn't wearing these clothes, I was wearing my normal clothes. I was a bit bored. I started checking the labels on my clothes. And I realised something, like, at that moment, at that moment, I realised if it wasn't for the Chinese, I would have been naked. Yeah. <laughs> All my clothes were made in China, everything. Even my pants were made in China. Yeah? And they're not like Chinesey pants. They haven't got dragons on them or anything like that. <laughs> Just an ordinary pair of pants. Then I realised my phone was made in China, my telly was made in China, I've got an Ikea table, I assume Sweden. No, China. I worked out, I'm virtually Chinese. <laughs> the only thing I haven't got is the accent. Right? But if I start doing that, going, hello, I'm Sean Locke, people go, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I think, how can I possibly be racist? I bloody love China. I'm obsessed with the place. <laughs> Ideally, I'd live in a pagoda. Yeah? To be honest, I don't think you can be racist about a country that's more economically powerful than you anyway. In fact, the way our economy's going, soon it'd be racist to do our voices. Yeah.
people in Beijing going, hello, I'm from London. They'll go, ooh. <laughs> Not comfortable with that. <laughs> and also, I don't think the Chinese are bothered what accents we're doing. All they want to know is, all they want to know is how much shit we want. That's what they want to know. <laughs> how much shit you want? <laughs> much as he's got, we love it. Keep sending it over. Can't get it over. <laughs> OK. Make more shit! <laughs> you got enough shit yet? No, we just used up that lot you just sent us. Keep it coming. We love it. Eee. Bloody hell. Come on, no time for sleeping. Gotta make shit for people in West. <laughs> Can't even make their own fucking pants. <laughs> Hang on, how are you gonna pay for all this shit? Uh, we were gonna borrow the money from you. It's funny, right? We make shit, we sell them shit, now we give them money to buy shit. Well, you find funny when I have day off in December. <laughs> no, because you have to face facts, the Chinese are slowly taking over the world. They're not doing it like we try to do, in a big imperialistic sweep. They're doing it the smart, the clever way, slowly buying everything up. And you'll notice subtle differences in your lives, little things will change. Like one day you'll notice there's less prongs on your fork. And they'll buy up all the pubs, and all the pub names will change, you know. You'll still call it the White Heart, so I'm going the White Heart. I refuse to call it the infinite stillness of water. <laughs> and you go to your greetings card shop, there's a special section. Commiserations on birth of daughter. Oh. <laughs> she bring much shame on family. Oh. And it'll affect every aspect of our lives, you know, affect culture, you know, because you surrender so much control and power to them. You know, I'll give you an example, like, you know, Christmas crackers. I've known for years, we've known for years that the, the actual crackers were made in China, but I always thought the jokes, the puns, were written in this country. But I think they're doing that in China now as well, because I pulled a cracker this Christmas, and I'll, I'll just say at this point, I'm not a fan of crackers. I've been campaigning to get rid of them for years. I think, I think they're a dull, joyless, pointless experience from start to finish. If there was any pleasure to be had from a cracker, you'd have them at other times of the year, wouldn't you? you know? It was, it was any, just the slightest pleasure, you know, you'd, you'd go, oh, happy birthday, do you want to pull a cracker? Yeah. <laughs> Dave and Sue are coming round later, okay, I'll go at the off-licence. Shall I get some crackers? <laughs> yeah, let's get some crackers and have a bloody laugh! <laughs> but you don't, because they're shit, aren't they? <laughs> the cracker I pulled this Christmas, the bang wouldn't have made a kitten look up. Yeah? <laughs> The paper hat didn't make me look like a king. I didn't look like a king. No. <laughs> I look like a grill chef in a service station. <laughs> On his third warning. Like that. <laughs> Do you want egg? Do you want egg? <laughs> the toy inside was a set of miniature, tiny, tiny screwdrivers, tiny, tiny screwdrivers that don't fit anything. I'd have preferred nothing. Then I wouldn't have had a trip to the bin. <laughs> But what did my head in, what ruined Christmas, was the joke. This was the joke in the, in the cracker. What did the ghost sing at the snowman's birthday party? Right? And the punchline is, freeze a jolly good fellow. Right? <laughs> I think if you enjoyed that, you've come to the wrong show. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> my point is, there's no need for a ghost in that joke. That's a superfluous, unnecessary ghost. That joke works perfectly well without the ghost. What do you think at Snowman's birthday party? Freeze a jolly good fellow. Why is there a fucking ghost in there? Who put a ghost in there? <laughs> and my theory at the cracker factory in China now, there's loads of people writing puns, there's a foreman walking up and down, the fellow goes, I've got one. What is it? What do you think at Snowman's birthday party? Freeze a jolly good fellow. The foreman goes, oh, I don't like it. No. <laughs> put a ghost in there. And that's, that, that's, that's the power we've surrendered to them. You know, they can just start sticking ghosts in things willy-nilly, you know, dragons, whatever the fuck they want. They can just, you know, you know, you know, you know. Imagine you did that with other jokes, like horse walks into a pub and the ghost behind the bar. You know, what? <laughs> horse is thinking, I thought, I was the novelty in this joke, you know. <laughs> I'm a beer-drinking horse. But no, no, there's no a fucking ghost working behind the bar. Yeah? And I'm ignoring the absurdity of a snowman having a birthday party. I've left that alone. I haven't touched that. 
Where on earth is a snowman going to live to one? <laughs> Maybe in the Arctic. But when it snows, Eskimos do not scurry out of their igloos and go, Hey, hey it's snowing. Let's make a man. <laughs> now they go, it's fucking snowing again, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Why do we live here? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you won't look at those brochures for Tenerife, will you? And all I'm saying is, all I'm saying, we've got to think about the consequences of that. You know, we do get all this, this cheap stuff, we do get this cheap stuff, but the standard of comedy is going to go downhill, you know? Maybe we should pay a bit more and have a laugh. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's, that's literally all I'm saying. Um, I'll tell you another way of putting it. The other day I went to buy some trainers, right? And I, in the end I settled on a pair of New Balance trainers because they're made in this country. And they're a bit more expensive, but to me it was worth it to pay those few extra quid to be safe in the knowledge that a kid in China is out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> if I could put one child on the doll, bloody proud of myself. <laughs> People think I'm having to go to the Chinese. I'm not. I'm just waking us up to this, this situation. We're getting into it. And what I'm saying is we've got to take a bit more responsibility. Wealth creation is what I'm talking about. We've all got to come up with wealth creation ideas. You know that guy Dyson? You know that guy Dyson? He's always coming up with ideas. You know people say everyone's got a book in them, which I don't think is true. I think most people haven't even got a piece of advice in them, right? <laughs> We can all think about ways to make the world around us a better place, you know, come up with wealth creation ideas. Like, I've come up with two apps, big hitters. These two apps are brilliant, they're going to make a load of money. The first app, wherever you are in the world, it tells you what the bin collection days are. <laughs> Who wouldn't want that? You're in Rio de Janeiro, you've got two bags of rubbish, don't know when to put them out, you know. They're leaking, so they're going all over your dancing shoes. You don't speak the lingo. Senor, when do you put the bins out? You know? <laughs> Just go on the app, half past two, Tuesday afternoon. Lovely. Off to the carnival. <laughs> Everyone in the world will want that app, right? The second app's even better, right? If you ever look at pornography on your mobile phone, it tells everyone in your contacts list. Everyone... <laughs> everyone gets a text, you know? And people say, well, why would I want that? Why wouldn't you? I bought it for you, darling. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> of course, eventually you would, you would. You'd be in a travel lodge, 3 o'clock in the morning, you go, sod it, let them know. Let them know! <laughs> Open the hotel window, shout across a dual carriageway, I'm having a wank, all right? <laughs> it's an emotion, it's like crying. I don't know what would be worse, friends and family getting the text, or just a plumber you used once. <laughs> but I'm always thinking of wealth creation ideas. You know like how HMV struggles now because of how we get music, because it was records, cassettes, CDs, now it's downloads. I'm already thinking about how we're going to get music in the future. Man, yeah! And I think in the future we're going to get music in the form of a gas. Yeah! How hard can it be to turn music, which is already in the air, into gas? <laughs> I'll let the boffins sort that one out. <laughs> and you'll go to HMV, you know like those inhalers asthmatics have, right? <laughs> just fill one of those up with all your music, like that. <laughs> and you just inhale it like that. <laughs> and all the music will be in your brain. <laughs> and you can play it whenever you want. Summer breeze! I don't want this one. How do I change it? Blink. Mm. Pump up the jam. Pump it up while the feet are stumping and your feet are moving. Mm -hmm. He's a little white ball. Every day he came down to a little white ball. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be an early adopter on it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> take a while. Yeah. That's a great idea. Please take these ideas. Make your fortunes. It's my gift. <laughs> but I realised something amazing the other day. I was fiddling around looking for a radio station. And I suddenly realised something. It's, it's incredible. You won't believe this, right? But, um, you know, there's radio stations for every type of music. Soul, jazz, rock, reggae, pop music. There's no radio station for scat music, yeah? <laughs> you know, if you fancy listening to a bit of scat music, there's no scat FM and you just put it on there and you're just like... Twenty-four hours scat. <laughs> All scat, no chat. Yeah. <laughs> Am 
Imagine how brilliant that is, especially if you've got guests who you want to leave your home. <laughs> Can you turn it down a bit? No, I like it. <laughs> While I'm on the subject, there's also, there's no yodelling FM. Oh. <laughs> I'm fascinated by yodelling. No, I'm a fa you know yodeling, you know the Swiss yodeler? You know they go, yodeler, Do you know that's a message? That's a way of communicating through the mountains. And the Swiss did that for years, until, of course, they discovered shouting. And that changed their lives. <laughs> One day a fellow was going, yodel, yodel, hoo, hoo. Another fellow went, step back, try this, just try this, try it, it's an idea. I've had it, try it, try it. Have you seen my cow? <laughs> it's brown! So what else has been going on? Oh, what else am I talking about? Yeah, oh, I've just started believing in God as well. Just got into that. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, I've just got into it, yeah. And actually, that's the reason I'm on tour. So uh, if you've been enjoying the show up to this point, after this bit, it gets a bit messagey. Um, <laughs> no, I do, I don't, I've just got into it. I've been an atheist most of my life. I'm actually, I was actually raised a Catholic. I'm what's known as a lapsed Catholic, which is their term for it. You know, makes it sound like every Sunday night, as I'm getting into bed, I go, oh, I forgot again. <laughs> well, the truth is, I'm 14, cycling to confession, and I suddenly thought to myself, hang on a sec, what are you doing? You're about to get into a wooden box and tell dirty stories to an old Irish man <laughs> who's never had sex. This is mental. <laughs> You're going to tell a wanking story. Because I'm 14, I've done a bit of wanking and some shoplifting tops. That's the worst things I've done. <laughs> You're going to tell a wanking story to an old man in a box. <laughs> and you couldn't say to him, Father, I had a wank. He'd go mental. He'd pull you out of the box going, Don't use that language in my church, you dirty little bastard. Use that filthy language in my church. Because this is the 70s. Everyone's hitting you in the 70s like that. Bang! They thought it was good for you, like red meat and smoking. Bang! Thanks for that. <laughs> if you bumped into Santa in the 70s, he'd have given you a boot up the arse. Yeah. What are you doing up, you little shit? Get the fucking bed. <laughs> Go on, fucking shoot me out there. I'm fucking wasting my fucking time in there. <laughs> 70 Santa was out of control. They had to send him on a course. He was just... <laughs> you can't do that, Santa. But these fuckers should be in bed. <laughs> no, so you couldn't say that to him. You couldn't say, oh, Father. You'd have to, you'd have to couch it carefully. I'd say, Father, I let the devil encourage me to be busy in my trousers. And he'd, he'd know what you were talking about. Yeah. It's mental confession. You can do anything you want. You go to confession, it's gone. It's like it never happened. It's kind of like a moral etch-a-sketch. You just go... Bruh, 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 bruh. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I miss it sometimes. Like, I did something quite bad the other day, and if, if I'd gone to confession, it wouldn't trouble me anymore, but it still bugs me what I did. It was pretty bad what I did. Was I, uh, I was meant to unload the dishwasher, but um, I couldn't be bothered, so I just put it on again. Yeah. Player. <laughs> and also, the other reason I stopped believing was Scooby-Doo, you know. I must have watched about 500 episodes of Scooby-Doo as a kid. Every single episode starts with a promise of supernatural, otherworldly, spiritual activity. But it always ends. That's been completely debunked. And there's a disgruntled former employee, you know. <laughs> with his hair all roughed, because they've just taken his costume off. His hair's always all over the place, you know. And I think what the makers of Scooby-Doo, Hanna-Barbera, were trying to tell us was, there is no God and join a union. You know, that's my thing. <laughs> but I just got back into it. And the reason I got back into it was the Jimmy Savile story, when that broke, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I thought to myself, well, if I don't believe in God, he gets off scot-free, doesn't he? Whereas, if I believe in God, he goes to hell. You know, it seems like a, <laughs> seems it makes sense to me, you know. In fact, I think if you are an atheist, what you're saying is, you're kind of fine with what Jimmy did. That's cool with you, yeah. <laughs> In fact, if you're an atheist, as far as I'm concerned, you're virtually an accomplice. <laughs> you might as well be standing next to him holding his tracksuit, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with you people, really don't. Yeah, and Hitler. Basically, if you're an atheist, you're a Nazi kiddie fiddler. <laughs> and I offered that to the Archbishop of Canterbury as a recruitment campaign, but he didn't... 
But I think the difference between me and most religious people is I don't take it that seriously. You know, I sort of, yeah, some days I'm into it, other days... Like some days I wear a veil, other days I don't eat pork. No, I just... <laughs> come see, come see, yeah. But it's done one brilliant thing, actually, since I started believing in God. It's done one brilliant thing. It's really a positive benefit in my life, which is I've stopped using the exclamation Jesus Christ as often as I used to. Because I used to use it far too often, you know. I couldn't find my keys. I'd go, oh, Jesus Christ, I can't find my keys. Ugh. Or I'd go to the supermarket, I haven't got a pound for the trolley, like that. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Thanks, God, nice one! <laughs> You trying to starve my family? <laughs> Is this some kind of test? <laughs> or I sit down to eat my dinner, it's all cooked already. Then I realise there's no pepper in the grinder. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> now I've got to get all the little balls out that go over the fucking floor. <laughs> My life is shit! <laughs> or I walk past the radio, the news is on, the price of stamps will be going up from Tuesday. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> That's gonna cost me 60 pence a year! <laughs> Or I'll be in the shower, you know like that. Mm. Hang on, that doesn't feel right. Oh, it's fucking conditioner, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Look what you've done! <laughs> Shiny hair for a week! <laughs> and once it's in, it's in. There's no anti-conditioner to take it out. Cos you didn't invent it! <laughs> well, stop doing that. That's good, isn't it? That's positive in your life, you know. It's a positive move in the right direction. Yeah? Of course, in the religion that I've invented, there are times where you can, you can use the exclamation. Like if your house is being enveloped by lava from a volcano. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! You know? Or you go to the Pamplona Bull Run, where they run the bulls through the streets, and you get a stitch. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Oh, dear, not now. <laughs> Too much bloody tapas, that's what it is. Because <laughs> they just think, you think they're just little plates, but you just keep eating, don't you? <laughs> I've probably had about five dinners. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on a plane and you see someone trying to light their shoes, like that. He's trying to light his shoes. <laughs> I think that's how they do it. <laughs> the light-hearted wing of Al Qaeda. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you're a centaur, right? You're a centaur. Come with me on this one. Um, <laughs> you know, human from there to there, there to there's human. Rest of you's horse, but you're facing the wrong way. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> ah! Whoa, boy, whoa, whoa! <laughs> whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah! <laughs> oh. That'd be a nightmare scenario, wouldn't it? That would, yeah. Imagine just trying to eat a bit of grass. You know, how, how difficult that would be. Mm. <laughs> oh, God, I'm starving. <laughs> you'd have to, both of you, you'd have to lie down on your side on the forest floor, wouldn't you? Both of you have to lie down like that. <laughs> and the horse bit would be there. And you'd lie there. Just for a little snack in the day, like. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine how vulnerable you'd feel. You know? 
That's probably why they died out. <laughs> and of course, the humany bit wouldn't like grass, would he? It's disgusting. How <laughs> you eat that shit? Can I have a curry? The horse goes, do you want to see me after a curry? Do you want to see me after a curry? You've got a dilemma there. You've got the taste buds of a human, digestive system of a horse. <laughs> yeah, you've got a problem, haven't you? Yeah. And I think that was what, that's what that routine is about. It's about, you know, in a relationship when you both have very conflicting needs, trying to find a solution so you can live together in harmony. That's really... <laughs> that's the sort of point of that bit of material. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, but like I said, I've got into it, I've got into religion and... Uh, and part also, I like, I, like, I like having to go atheists as well, because they're so cocky, aren't they? Like, yeah, we know, we know. No, you don't fucking know, you don't know. You know? And also, they believe in all that evolution bollocks, which is all, obviously a load of bollocks. <laughs> oh, got away with that one, that's fine. Um, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't subscribe to the theory of evolution at all. I don't think it's true, I don't think it makes sense, I don't think it stacks up. If evolution was a continual process, then surely by now, bananas would be round, wouldn't they? <laughs> Or straight. I don't know which way they were going. They're either going that way or like that. Maybe going back round the other way. Who knows? Yeah. Frogs would have made their mind up. Lake or land, time to choose. You know? We'd have grown another thumb, definitely. We'd have definitely grown another thumb, wouldn't we? Because how useful is that? that four fingers and a thumb. It's incredible the dexterity you can do with that. Surely by now we'd have another thumb coming out of there. So a single human hand would look like that. Imagine the amazing things you could do with <laughs> two thumbs on each. I mean, obviously, it'd make groping a lot more thorough, wouldn't it? But <laughs> you could carry six pints and tweet at the same time, couldn't you? <laughs> and don't tell me we're related to monkeys. Sorry, I won't have that. Don't tell me we're related to monkeys. No, sorry. Because I'll tell you what, I was on a flight recently, and the hostess hostess made a request. She said, anyone on the flight's got any peanuts on their possession, please don't open them and eat them. I said, someone on the flight with a severe peanut allergy, you'll cause them a great deal of harm and distress. Can you imagine a monkey with a bag of peanuts agreeing to that request? <laughs> like another monkey goes, That monkey would do whatever the monkey equivalent of fuck off is, wouldn't it? He'd go, Because <laughs> they're bastards, monkeys. They don't give a shit about each other. If one monkey's ill, his neighbour doesn't come around and see how he is. He tries to have sex with his whole family. <laughs> if you could explain Jimmy Savile to a monkey, they'd see him as a role model. <laughs> Horrendous creatures. We're not related to them. And also, I've never seen an episode of Who Do You Think You Are, which goes right back to the monkey ancestors, so I rest my case. <laughs> I accept I'm not a scientist. I know I'm not a scientist, but what is a scientist? It's just somebody who thinks about stuff, then chooses to back up their thoughts with evidence and facts. Only difference between me and a scientist. I don't feel the need. <laughs> I'm not so insecure. I need to back up what I say. I just say it. Dah. And I've been forced into this position by my children. I've got three children, three young children, and they ask me questions all day long about everything under the sun, you know? And I don't know a lot of stuff. I really don't, you know? I don't, I don't know. I, I read a lot, but usually when I get to the interesting bit, I remember something embarrassing, go, <laughs> And they ask me questions about science and things like that. You know, for a while, I thought a house was being haunted by my old physics teacher. <laughs> and he's just going around the house going, ooh. Ask your dad about magnets. <laughs> <laughs> Good use of a ghost in a joke, I feel. Um... <laughs> Thank you. And they'll come up to me and ask me about magnets and gravity. Now, I, don't, I can't explain them, but I don't like saying I don't know beats me, ask your mum. It wears away at my self-esteem. So I just lie, I make shit up, you know. <laughs> And they'll say magnets. And I'd go, I, well, magnets. Um, you know when you go to school in the morning and some kids you're pleased to see, other kids you're not that bothered about? Metal's a bit like that. 
<laughs> they're happy with that, you know. They're, 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 yeah. Gravity, gravity, oh yeah. You know when an apple falls out of a tree, it creates a force that sends the birds up in the air. Because <laughs> apples are heavier than birds, as we all know, because birds are made of feathers, everyone knows that. <laughs> Solid feather right the way through. And the Earth's got a core, that's right, it's got a core. It's trying to get all the apples back. <laughs> to make cider for God, that's right, yeah. <laughs> A verb, a verb, I think that's an old cockney word for a tenor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that slag owes me a verb. <laughs> yeah, George, put a verb on that horse for us, will you? <laughs> they asked me about Velcro. I've got this vague notion it's got something to do with the Apollo missions. I said, Velcro grows on the moon. It grows on the moon, yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's moon grass. That's what it is, really. Yeah. That's why the astronauts walk like that. <clears throat> I just don't know. I don't even. I don't even understand how yogurt works. I don't understand it. It's off and it's got bacteria, but it's good for you. What the fucking what? <laughs> dry cleaning. I've been going to dry cleaners for years. I don't know what the fuck they get up to in there. I don't know. <laughs> I just go in there. There's a funny smell. I sort of trust them. <laughs> I don't know what shit you guys are getting up to. To be honest, I don't want to know. As long as my clothes come back clean, I'll keep stum, but um, doesn't smell right, does it? Doesn't smell good. <laughs> Look at your eyes, they're all red around the edge, aren't they? Your skin is peeling off. I'd get out of here now if I were you. Like the other day, I was putting sun cream on them. They said to me, How does sun cream work? I said, I said uh, It's invisible clothes made of cream. There we go. <laughs> factor 20 is a t shirt, factor 50 is a duffel coat. <laughs> But the questions keep coming and they get madder and madder. Dad, why can't we smell noises? What? Oh. <laughs> if we can see our face in water, can we drink mirrors? <laughs> so what I do is I just lie. I just lie, you know, and it makes me feel better about myself. And um, I'll save on university fees, you know. So. <laughs> But there's a theory of parenting that you should never lie to your kids. You know, there is a theory that you should never ever lie to your children, apart from Father Christmas, the tooth fairy, and how hot the food is. You know, which is. <laughs> it's fair enough, isn't it? If they've been giving you a difficult day, it's a bit of payback. <laughs> those fish fingers, yeah, they've been out for a while now, yeah, work away on those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new smacking, that's what it is. Um, It's perfectly legal, they can't touch you, I've checked. <laughs> but there is a theory, apart from that, you should never lie to your kids. Now, I lie to my children all the time. One night I was putting my daughters to bed, she said, Daddy, are there monsters under my bed? And I said, yes. <laughs> oh, there's terrible monsters under your bed. Oh, you don't want to bump into those fellas. <laughs> and if you put your feet down on the bedroom floor at any point, they'll reach out, grab your ankles and drag you under the bed. <laughs> Ooh. And they'll take you off into like a labyrinth of turds and wasps. Ah. <laughs> and he's on duty till seven o'clock in the morning. Seven o'clock. <laughs> seven o'clock. Seven. <laughs> so if you wake up quarter to seven, just wait 15 minutes before you come and disturb your mummy and your daddy. <laughs> in fact, I think he's, he's coming on duty now. Oh. <laughs> Stay on the bed, stay on... Uh, get out of it, you... Uh, stay on... Pass the Mr Tiddles. Get out of it, you... Get, get, get. Stay on the bed, stay on the bed. Good night. <laughs> and some people say that's not ideal parenting, but... Um, I think it's better than the alternative, which is to tell the truth, isn't it? So they say, Daddy, are there monsters under the bed? You say, no, nah, there's no monsters under the bed, don't be silly. Because then they'll say, are there monsters outside? And if you tell the truth, you have to go, well, yeah, there are, but uh, they don't look like monsters, no. They look like ordinary men and women. <laughs> A bit like your mummy and your daddy, actually. <laughs> but they're capable of terrible things. <laughs> anyway, good night. <sighs> If 
to anyone from social services, I don't do that. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm in this bike shop, and <laughs> I don't know how else to bring it up, really. Um, I had my bike stolen, and as anyone here who's had their bike stolen will know, there's no chance of you getting the bike back or anyone getting punished for it. We've got a very laid-back attitude towards bike theft in this country, haven't we? We treat it a bit like they do cannabis in Amsterdam, you know? I'm sure there's guidebooks to Britain which go, hey, come to Britain, they love it if you steal their bikes. <laughs> Those crazy Brits love nothing better than you ride off with their brand new bike. <laughs> come to the British Bike Stealing Festival. And ride off in their brand new bikes. Because I regularly see fellas riding on, they've got one bike and they're holding another bike. Which they've obviously just nicked. But people just go, oh look, he's nicked a bike. Yeah. Like it's an old pastime. Yeah? Unless he has such a vivid relationship with his imaginary friend he bought it a bike. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, I'm in the bike shop, right? And I, I was attracted towards this lady's bike. You know, I thought I quite liked it, you know, like that. Because I like the step through, you know, when you do that, I, I quite like that. You know? But the guy in the bike shop was going, yeah, but it's a lady's bike. You should get this hybrid multi-terrain thing. And I'm going, yeah, yeah, but this is nice, isn't it? You put that, and the saddle's lots of room on the saddle, isn't there? And you can put all your stuff in that basket thing there. It's, it's a brilliant bike. And you're going, yes, but it's a lady's bike. And it really pissed me off. I didn't buy a bike in the end, you know. And I can understand if I went to Marks and Spencer's for a vest, came out in a basque, you know, have a word. <laughs> So I've, started, so I've been using the rental bikes, you know, the rental bikes they've got, they've got all over London. They're brilliant, those rental bikes, you know. The only problem is I refuse to call them Boris bikes. I refuse to call it. So I go to someone's house and they say, how'd you get it? I said, I came on one of the rental bikes. They said, Boris bikes. I said, no, I don't call them that. And it's just, just tense, because I, I, don't, I don't see why he gets the credit for something he had nothing to do with, you know. It's just happened to happen on his watch, you know. He doesn't take the credit for other things, does he? They're not called the Boris riots, are they? <laughs> he didn't know there was anybody in London in August. <laughs> Why aren't they all in Tuscany? <laughs> I'll call them Boris bikes when I can park one on his fat ass like that. <laughs> and I don't, I'm, really, I'm not a fan of Boris. I, t I tell you why, because he's one of those people who's brilliant on television, but you don't really know what he's capable of. You know, he's quite, I find him quite a sinister, scary man, because he doesn't really say what he believes in. He just, he's just, I think he's capable of anything. And David Cameron is very similar. He's very good on television. You don't know what he's capable of. And the reason I mention it is the alternative is so piss poor, it's going to be one of those two, isn't it? Because Ed Miliband, there's no way you can have Ed Miliband as Prime Minister. It would be cruel. It would be cruel. <laughs> to put him on his own in a room with Vladimir Putin would be cruel to him. Vladimir Putin would just stick his fingers up his nostrils and start dragging him around. <laughs> just booting him up the arse. <laughs> Ed Miliband would get bullied in the night garden. <laughs> Iggle Piggle just go. <sighs> and he's such a strange looking man, isn't he? To me, he looks like a startled Hawaiian lesbian, doesn't he? <laughs> You know when you come across one in a clearing, they just... <laughs> and it, I think he said it, somebody said it in a speech recently, and I thought it was a very good thing about politics. And what they said was, they said, we should all think about what sort of world we want to live in. What sort of world do you want to live in? I think it's a very good question to ask people, to help them choose who to vote for, you know? And I started to think more and more about this. What sort of world do I want to live in? Help me choose which political party to get behind. And I realised, for example, I want to live in a world, I want to live in a world where George Foreman actually makes those grills. That's the... <laughs> He's in a shed with loads of oxy settling, burning stuff, soldering kit. <laughs> Fella pops his head round the door and goes, George, we need more of them grills. We got an order here for 2,000 grills. You better hurry up, George. George goes, what do you think I'm doing, man? I'm making fucking grills. I'm having problems with a detachable drip tray for easy cleaning. <laughs> Motherfucker won't clip on right. You finish this goddamn grill, I'm gonna start another one. Mm, 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 mm. Sometimes I wish I never had the idea for making grills. Cos I make them so damn good. Yeah, that's the world. I want to live in a world where if you put your name to something, it's cos you made it. David Beckham has to make the pants that he sells in his name. Imagine if you were wearing a pair of pants made by David Beckham. Yeah. Actually, they'd probably just have one hole for the leg and you'd be walking around like that. 
Yeah, yeah, they've got these new Beckham pants. What do you reckon? They're pretty... <laughs> I look pretty cool in them, I think, you know. It's sort of world I want to live in. I want to live in a world, this is really actually personal to me, I want to live in a world where a doctor doesn't need to get a long fibre optic cable with another cable attached to it, which they don't tell you about, two cables, doesn't need to get two cables and force them down your tiny little dry pee hole <laughs> into your bladder just to tell you everything's all right. Doesn't need to get two cables and force them down, deep down inside you. You know, you think about all the medical advancements that have been made, in med great leaps in medical science, and we're still sticking cables down a man's penis, you know? <laughs> Incredible leaps have been made, but on that area, nah, that's fine, just stick cables down there. <laughs> you, know, you know, they wouldn't have done that on the deck of the victory. They were sawing people's legs off, cutting them open, they go, should we stick the cable down there? No, for Christ's sake, that's... <laughs> That's horrendous. I want to just come up with something less medieval, you know. They probably, probably everyone goes, should we do something about this cable down the cock thing? Nah, it's just men, they just, he's going to do something horrible with his cock anyway, you know, sort of. <laughs> you know, force two cables down what I would never describe as a hole. I would never call that a hole. <laughs> if you saw that anywhere else, you wouldn't go as a hole there. You wouldn't, you wouldn't. <laughs> if you saw it on a bit of skirting board, you wouldn't go, oh, brilliant, we can... We can run the cables through there. That's lovely, that is. <laughs> that's, that's handy. We'll save on drilling. We'll just get them through there. We'll knock off early. That's not a hole, then. It is a hole. You hold it straight and I'll get it in there. That's a bloody hole, that is. <laughs> it's not a hole. It's a very deep crack. And in the process, ruin your penis. My penis is ruined. They've ruined it. It's not, it's not immediately obvious. Over time, you realise, you know. If I go for a piss now, it takes about half a second. <laughs> it's like emptying a bucket of water. Just... <laughs> Sorry about that. I do apologise. <laughs> Normally, I use the cubicles, but it was busy. But look what they did to it, look what they did to it, look, it's ruined. Really <laughs> you can keep tennis balls up there, you know, it's just a... It's like a floppy Pringles tube. <laughs> another thing, all right, another thing that bugs me, I want to live in a world where cats respect fencing. Where they, you know... <laughs> if dogs were jumping round from garden to garden, you go, sort your bloody dog out, what's going on? Just, jumped in, ran around the garden, scared the shit out of everyone. You could chain it up. They go, oh, you can't chain a cat up. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can chain anything up. You get it and you put a chain on it. <laughs> if you could put soap on a rope, you can put a chain on a cat. So I like <laughs> Anyway, you don't need to. I've invented something. Solution. Brilliant solution. It's a box. It's a long, narrow box. You put the cat in the box. At the end of the box, there's a hole for the cat's head. At the bottom of the box, there's four holes for the cat's legs. Like that. And it can enjoy all of your garden. <laughs> it can enjoy every corner of your garden. And you can paint the box the same colour as the cat, so it's not embarrassed. <laughs> but as soon as it wants to leave your garden, uh, climb out, it's impeded by the box. <clears throat> and there you've got a solution. Because I'm sick and tired of looking out of my kitchen window and there's a cat staring at me like I'm something dripping off a toilet brush. Just <laughs> utter contempt on its face. Looks at, looks at me like I've built my home on an ancient cat burial ground. Like, <laughs> he has desecrated the resting place of the elders. I don't let them settle. As soon as I see one, literally, whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm doing, as soon as I see one, coffee cup down like that, out the door. <laughs> But that can be quite awkward, because I could be having a civilised conversation with a neighbour I barely know. <laughs> Just moved to the area. Yes, no, we'd love to come round for the barbecue. That's very... Yeah, on Tuesday, yes, yeah. Very, excuse me a minute. Because <laughs> they don't like that, cats. Cats do not like that. To be honest, most people don't. There's very few... <laughs> There's very few people who you go... <laughs> they go, be over in a sec. In fact, I use it in traffic. 
instead of swearing. If someone cuts me up, I don't swear. If someone cuts me up, I just go shh. Because <laughs> they're never sure whether they saw that or not. Did I see that? One? <laughs> you really get in their mind, you know? And after you've done it, it returns with sort of like a cheery smile, go shh. <laughs> get right in there. Another thing, right, I want to live in a world, I want to live in a world where if you're a pop star, pop singer, and you're not a great singer, you haven't got a brilliant singing voice, you don't compensate for it by slowly sticking your ass in my face. Going, <laughs> yeah, never mind about, never mind about singing. This is much better than any old sing song, isn't it? Look at that. That's what we really came for, didn't we? Look at that. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? You know, singing, anyone can sing, but we got this. I'm sure there's a mathematical equation you can do between how bad a singer you are and how far you need to stick your ass out. <laughs> Summer breeze, make me feel fine. Floating through the jasmine. Don't listen to this. Look at this. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. If you see the Pussycat Dolls live, the only thing you don't see is the cat. <laughs> There we go, have a look at that. <laughs> that's lovely, that. <laughs> oh, that's what you want to look at. <laughs> well, that's nice, isn't it? That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, I've gone a bit mad then. <laughs> All I'm saying is, if you, if you can't sing, don't sing, you know? Don't sing and try and make up for it with genitals, because to me that's not a trade-off. <laughs> As you do that with other jobs, the first time you realised the plumber couldn't fix your boiler was when his penis slapped onto the back of your hand. <laughs> and he's standing next to you with one button undone on his overalls going... <laughs> Sorry, not familiar with that boiler. <laughs> Let's check the back in. Can't get the pilot light started. So I thought this might compensate for your family's lack of hot water. <laughs> Cab driver turns around and goes, we're lost. <laughs> Another thing, right, also, I want to live in a world where you're not allowed to advertise to children. No advertising to kids. It's not on. People come into my home uninvited through the medium of television and they wave shiny shit in my kids' faces, right? <laughs> and it's not fair. We can defend ourselves against advertising. We can make judgments, choices and decisions. Children can't do that. They can't do that because they're fucking idiots. <laughs> they're morons. They're thick as pig shit. <laughs> if you put a picture of Shrek on a bag of gravel, they want it. Big hammock of snot hanging under their chin. <laughs> if all advertising was door to door, if you could only advertise door to door, you wouldn't tolerate it. If someone knocked on your door, you open the door and went, Can I speak to your seven year old daughter, please? <laughs> Bring her out. And he bends down, ignores you, and goes, Look, it's a My Pretty Polly Pocket mini vanity valise set. And that spins around, that opens up, and then messages in there, and you click characters and play with your friends and like that. After a while, you go, Fuck off. <laughs> Sorry, Daddy said it again, isn't he? Mm. <laughs> Still, you hear it at school soon enough. <laughs> or they will. Because <laughs> you never think you're the source, do you? <laughs> yeah, it'd be great if all advertising was done door to door. I'd love that, especially when celebrities did adverts. Because that'd be great, wouldn't it? Be walking across your hallway, the letterbox would flip open, and you'd hear a voice going, "Hello, it's Sir Chris Hoy here." <laughs> Before I go cycling, I like a bowl of brown flakes. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Sir Chris Hoy here. Before I go cycling, I like a bowl of brown flakes. Oh, kill me now. <laughs> And he'd bump into other celebrities on the street. Oh, hello, Kira. Hello, Chris. <laughs> Hi, it's Kira Knightley here from the films. Yes, I didn't think I needed the money either. <laughs> 
Anyway, I'm wearing a really tight cat suit. And when I walk away, I'd like you to look at my ass and think about Coco Chanel. <laughs> yeah. It's really subtle. It's my ass and perfume. <laughs> oh, who's this? Hello, hello, Ray. Hello, Kira. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ray Winstone here. Put a bet on you, slag! <laughs> There's loads of markets in play now. <sighs> oh, who's that coming along the street? <laughs> oh, it's David Beckham. Hello, Ray. <laughs> Man of a thousand voices. Hello, David Beckham here. Um, everything under the sun. <laughs> All of it. Hats, flannels, spanners, trousers, <laughs> motorbikes. Just buy shit, all right? <laughs> Thank you. So, as you can see, it's quite difficult for me to find a political party to suit all my needs, you know? Because sometimes I can be left-wing and other times I'm quite right-wing. You know, like people talk about all the stuff we get from America. I always think, why don't we get the decent stuff from America, like guns or the death penalty? <laughs> Not for murder, but definitely bike theft. Sort that out. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's already a debate in society about whether they should chemically castrate paedophiles. I've gone way over the line on this one. I'm, I, I'm into liquidising them, you know? <laughs> you know that empty plinth on Trafalgar Square? Put a massive liquidizer on there, like 40 foot high, huge liquidizer. What a brilliant way to start the weekend. It's five o'clock, it's Friday, let's liquidize a pedo. And everyone goes, <laughs> they go, Ooh. it may twist the other way, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it goes, Wah! and it's a big party atmosphere, it's Friday, and people are playing bands, are playing music. <laughs> People selling food, there's protesters there. No, it's an illness. <laughs> and it'd be like the Christmas lights, whoever's number one that week gets to press the button. <laughs> so this week, liquidizes the pedos, it's Maroon 5. <laughs> I love those guys. <laughs> and at the start, there'd just be a man standing there, his glasses on, and obviously his spattered trousers, like that. And within a second, he's just like a green soup, like that. <laughs> he goes, where? And it'd be a bit like the London Eye, you know, loads of cities have got them now. You know, it'd be all over the country, every, every Friday everyone's going... Boom. And of course, eventually we'd run out. We'd run out, wouldn't we? Which would be a difficult moment. Everyone would pile into Trafalgar Square going, Hey, come on, we're getting let... They go, we haven't got any, we've run out. <laughs> oh, you're kidding, you're joking. I was looking forward to that. I've got a friend over from Holland, really wanted to see it. <laughs> now we've run out, haven't got any. Oh, God, Jesus. <sighs> he looks like one. He does. <laughs> Look at him, look at his glasses. Get him in there, get him in, get him in, get him in. <laughs> or we could have to import them from China. <laughs> How many pedo you want? <laughs> many as you got, mate. We can't get enough. Keep, we love them, just send them over. <laughs> and they'll come over in those container ships, you know? And they'll open the container at Southampton and they'll all come out blinking like pit ponies, like this. <laughs> Where's the kids? You said there'd be kids. Where's the kids? <laughs> <laughs> Straight into the liquidizer. <laughs> hey, back on. And you may call me a dreamer. <laughs> but I'm not the only one. Thank you very much. You've been a fantastic crowd. Great pleasure. Thank you. I just thought we need a little palate cleanser after that last bit. <laughs> I, I, I thought there's a few people out there, I don't think they've managed to visualise it properly, so... <laughs> oh, <dear>. oh. 
<laughs> Lovely feeling, that. Um, oh, at last, I got it on. <laughs> I noticed a few people taking pictures. Can I make a request? Please don't take pictures. Firstly, why? Um, I can understand if you were walking through the woods and you saw me through the trees. <laughs> But, um, you know, people take pictures, they end up out there on Twitter. I'd like it to be our little secret. It's our little secret. I don't want to spoil the surprise for other people, you know? Because this is one of those jokes, you know, I don't want to come out one night and everyone goes, oh, it's that bit, I've heard about that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is one of those jokes, if it doesn't work, it's quite difficult to move on from. <laughs> anyway, never mind about that. Um, So, what's been going on? <laughs> uh, and as you can see, the logistical problems are just, you know, the eating, you know, just you lie down, like both of you. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. And if the horse doesn't like what you're eating, you know, if you've arranged for a burger to be laid down there, it can rebel, can't it go, don't eat that! <laughs> All right, I admit it's a knob gag. Um, <laughs> I started here, work backwards. I thought, I want to be on stage, massive knob, waving it around. How do I do that? <laughs> In fact, it doesn't look like a knob, does it? It looks like I'm being molested by an old lady, doesn't it? <laughs> shows <laughs> you know those old ladies who let their hair down at night <laughs> I'm like a young girl again <laughs> you know when I started in this business I had many hopes and dreams and aspirations <laughs> didn't see this coming at all <laughs> But, you know, it's a nightmare scenario. Look, trying to get up. <laughs> Fighting off wolves. Get off me! Like that. <laughs> anyway. Here we go. Here we go, road up. Oh, by the way, if anyone's been affected by any issues raised in this... <laughs> there's a number you can phone. It'd be like quite a good Channel 4 documentary, wouldn't it? The boy who was a reverse centaur. But before I go, I'd just like to thank my wife, because uh, I don't know what it was that I said that made her buy me this for Christmas, but... Um... <laughs>
quarterback. 